there's that. Mm. <laughs> Camera. Mostly today is going to be quiet. What? Okay, so that's there. So let's do this. Let's stop the share. Let's go to East Ave. Let's hit them. Okay, anybody starting to come in? No. Okay, well we can wait just a few minutes.
All right, so hopefully people start showing up soon um, as they do. Um, going to start talking us through the syllabus and, um, and then web assign and kind of try to get us comfy with the mechanisms of the course, uh, but then, then we will um, actually start on some mathematics. Still nobody here. Curious. Oh, it's unpublished, that's why. Okay. That's my fault. Um send another email. Okay, that should work. Good morning. Hey, good oh, morning. How are you, Professor? Doing great. Doing great. Good to see you. All right. So as folks start uh, arriving, sorry for the little technical speed bumps there. Folks start arriving. We're going to start talking through the course. Today's going to be pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to go through the syllabus and I'll show you guys how to get into WebAssign. Um, and then we'll, we'll begin on a little bit of a kind of review of the real numbers and talk about topology and the shape of different sets of numbers so we can prepare to begin talking about continuity and the sort of things that we need to, to discuss limits. Um, but I want to give just a few more minutes for folks to trickle in. I know it was a, a not super smooth start there this morning. Um, so in about five minutes, we'll begin in earnest. Uh, so, so take a few minutes. You got some time to yourself. Um, and once more folks show up we will get started in earnest yeah so this one is published but that one wasn't that was by my fault
All right. So good morning, gang. Let me see if I can get my view here a little more organized. There we go. So now I can see you all and the dot cam. Looks like we've got 11 folks in here. I do want to take a little bit of roll calls so I can um, keep track of, of who I have and haven't seen, just in case there's anybody who's having a hard time getting in and I just don't see at all. Uh, so if you give me just one second to do that, I think I can do it by uh, e staff here. Yeah. So I apologize. You won't be able to see anything while I have the um, while I have my browser up because I've got this shut to share the screen. But um, there were some instances where professors accidentally shared things they didn't want to share. As hilarious as you can imagine that. <laughs> Zoom has built in a, a little thing like this to avoid that in the future. Um, so I'll go ahead and mark you guys as having attended. I repeat. Cool. So, good morning. Good morning. Sorry about that. I had a hard time figuring this out. It's okay. It's not your fault. Um, I realized that the announcement with the link didn't actually publish when I first posted it. That's why I sent that second email. Um, so if you had a little bit of a hard time getting in here, don't don't feel bad at all. I was late getting it started, and then the first link that I posted would have been hard for you to get to. So I, I um, that's why we're just waiting a few minutes for folks to sort of trickle in. Um, but yeah, no no problem. Not your fault. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish taking roll here and then we'll get started today. I'm just going to go over the syllabus and we're going to talk a little bit um, a little bit about real numbers and make sure we're comfy with like the topology of sets of real numbers, the open closed intervals and the, the ideas that uh, that we need in order to talk about continuity. It's nice to see so many familiar names and faces though. This is cool. I think uh, a lot of you took various flavors of pre-calc and trig with me and that's that's exciting to see. Um, there's also plenty of people here that I, I don't know and so I hope to get to know you guys over the over the next few weeks. Um, if you do ever have any questions, um, Canvas is the best way to get a hold of me through a Canvas message. Um, so if there's anything you're uncertain about as the course gets started, don't be shy about sending me a message on Canvas and we can talk our way through anything that, that you're curious about. Okay, I think a few more people joined in here, so let me just go ahead and get them marked as attended. Um, is there anybody here today who is, I don't know, you wouldn't be able to get in here if you weren't registered for the course, yes, yeah, so they should be showing up, there it is, okay. Missing anybody.
Oh, there we go. Okay. So I think that's everybody. All right, cool. Okay, so coming back here. Um, the basics today, I just want to, like I said, we're going to go through the syllabus. I'll show you how to get into WebAssign, which is where um, the homework and quizzes, that sort of material, will be located. Um, and then, and then we'll actually talk about some mathematics. Um, if you're curious, um, my name. Is john File sticker. I know the last name is weird. Um, you can just call me john. Um, that's fine. Um, normally, this is where I would tell you what my email is and where my office is and all of that stuff. But, uh, but of course, it's not super relevant now. Um, my email, still good to know, although I imagine you probably already know it. Um, so my first name dot my last name at SF College dot edu. Um, my office, although I'm, I'm definitely not there right now, is A031D. Uh, and if we're able to resume in-person teaching, um, then of course we will have uh, office hours in that office. Um, but for right now, office hours are going to be something that happens in Zoom. And I haven't set up exactly when. Hmm, Antoine, I see your message. Um, I'm not sure why that's showing up like that, but that's something that we can take a look at um, a little bit later. Yeah, so after class, I'm not, I'm not sure why that would be the case. I definitely did submit a, a mark for you there, and, and you should be seeing some, um, some influence on your GPA. It might have something to do with the SAT unsat thing. I don't remember if you took the SU option or not. Um, but let's talk about that after class. And then Angelica asked if, um, if we'd be recording these lectures. Yes, uh, so I'm recording everything that we do here on my computer, and then I'm gonna be posting them to YouTube. I used to post them via Zoom, like record them on the Zoom cloud and then host them there, um, but it sucked, it was horrible. It was like the video was really glitchy and it was just terrible. So yeah, I record them on my computer and then I'll, I'll be posting them on Zoom. Um, office hours. Definitely an important thing. Um, even though we're not doing in-person teaching right now, I do still wanna do some office hours and I'd like to do them via Zoom. Um, the question is just uh, when. So, uh, you know, um, that's something I would like some input from you guys on. I do think it's possible to design a poll here in Zoom. Uh, I don't wanna burn any more class time on it today, um, but this is something we will talk about next time. We'll set these up on Wednesday. My schedule this summer is actually pretty open. I'm teaching this class um, and we'll normally meet from 9.45 to 10, or sorry, to 11.05, right? Um, and then I have one other class that I teach from 11.30 to 12.45. Um, but aside from those on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, my schedule is, is pretty open. So on Wednesday, when you come to class, have some ideas of when you would like to have office hours, what times uh, and days would work well for you, and then we'll have a little vote here. and. Um, and that's how we will determine the office hours. Go ahead if you haven't and pop open a browser window, navigate over to Canvas. That should all be available to you guys um, now. And then in our class uh, on the homepage in Canvas, you'll see an option to uh, click to download the full syllabus. Let's have everybody go ahead and do that now. And then we're gonna kind of talk through the syllabus a little bit. So I turn that off. Let's do this. Okay, whole thing. All right. So here is 
the syllabus for the class and hopefully you're all the looking syllabus for is on uh, where can I find the syllabus? It is on Canvas. Uh, so if you go to our class in Canvas, um, the homepage uh -huh. has a has a little link um, right here. And uh, give me, uh, the first one takes you to WebAssign. The second link should pop up a little dialogue to download the syllabus. Ah, okay, okay, perfect. So um, these are the basics. This is the stuff, right? Um, that's my name, that's the office. This phone number um, rings in my office. I do have that forwarded to my cell. Um, so if you if you must call it, you can call it. But I would definitely prefer um, a Canvas message because I don't have any caller ID. I can't retrieve voicemail from this number right now. Um, and it just rings saying that it's coming from my office. So it's generally a, a panic moment where I'm like, oh shit, what's going on? Why is my work calling me? Um, but if you, if you desperately need to get a hold of me for something, you can call that. Um, but don't leave voicemails there because I won't be able to retrieve them. Um, email is a great way to get a hold of me. That works fine. Um, so do Canvas messages. And I've, I've seen that a lot of people prefer Canvas messages. If you're going to email me directly, um, please, in the subject, include the course number, right? So this is Mac 2311. Um, just go ahead and put that in the, in the subject. Class meetings are when they are. Office hours, we still gonna figure that out. The final exam, I would go ahead and put this in your phone right now as a, as a little alarm because it is not our normal uh, class meeting time. It's 8 a.m. rather than 10 a.m. Um, and it's something that you definitely do not wanna forget about. So I would, I would pop this in your phone's calendar with like a, a few warnings, like a two day warning and then a, a one day warning and then a one hour warning or something like that. The prereqs for this class, um, you have to have completed pre-calc and trig, and you can do those separately as Mac 1140 and Mac 1114, um, or you can do them together as Mac 1147, and I know plenty of people here went both routes. Um, but as long as you, you got through both of those classes, then you should be ready for this one. The textbook we're going to use, I can show you a physical version of it here. Looks like this. Um, it is Stewart's Calculus. It is the eighth edition, and it is the early transcendentals version. This part right here, the early transcendentals, very important. Got to have that one. Look for the blue cover. The one that has a red cover is not the one. Um, now, I don't recommend that anybody goes out and buys that book right now. Uh, in WebAssign, which is where we're going to be doing most of our work, um, you will have a copy of the, the textbook, an electronic copy of the textbook. It's not a great electronic copy in that it's, it's not super easy to flip back and forth through. Um, but if you are having a hard time with the, the electronic copy of the textbook on WebAssign and you don't want to spend whatever $300 on a new copy of, of Stuart, um, send me a message on Canvas. I can help you get a free PDF copy of the textbook. And PDFs we know are much easier to navigate. Um, you don't have to be connected to the internet, all that good shit. Um, so if, if you're having trouble with the textbook, um, let me know and I can help you get a PDF copy that is, is uh, not going to cost you anything. Um, I can also help you find a used copy if you like a physical copy of the textbook. I understand that. I'm like that too. Um, I really like to have a physical copy, but $300 is still way too much money. So if you're having a hard time finding a physical copy, uh, again, reach out to me. I can, I can usually suss out cheap books pretty well. Um, one place to look, if you want to go ahead and start looking right now, so cheap. I suggest abebooks.com. Sorry. Yeah, that's A A B E, like Abe Lincoln, uh, books.com. Uh, they have really good deals on old textbooks. Um, I think I've seen copies of this book for in the $20 to $30 range, if you can find it used. Uh, other places to look are um, Library Genesis. Uh, Abe will have physical copies of the book, 
libgen, and you have to just Google this because the, the website changes all the time, the URL changes all the time, um, this would be a place to find an electronic copy. Um, but also you can, you can hit me up for an electronic copy. So, moving along. Does the, I'm sorry, does the libgen include the web design code or no? No. Um, so if you were to order from Abe or from libgen, um, both of those would, would just get you a copy of the book. Um, you might be able to on Got a it. package that includes the, the access code, um, <clears throat> but I don't think so. Usually both of those are used sources, um, so it's, it's just going to be the book. Any access code will probably have already been used. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, um, uh, also, is this book good for Calc 2 as well? or? It is. If you get so, if you get the full Stuart's calculus, the eighth edition, the early transcendentals, the book that I had up there on, on the screen for a minute, um, that's good for Calc one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. um, you can buy the okay. stuff separately. I think they sell a version of it that is like just the chapters used in Calc one and Calc two. Um, but if you're going to buy a physical book, I would go ahead and get a used copy of of the full banana. Um, and yeah, it would be good all the way through Calc 3. Another place to look are like the Friends of the Library sales or any used bookstore here in town if you're still in Gainesville. Um, students buy and sell copies of this book all the time. Uh, so it's, it's possible to find a used copy at a physical bookstore too. And yeah, definitely good all the way through Calc 3. Any other questions about the textbook? Actually, let's, let's pause. Good morning, here. sir. Say that again. Good morning. How are you? Morning. I have a question. Yeah. So, uh, how can we get the access code? So, so the access access code. This is good. That's that's the next thing I want to talk about. So, um, WebAssign is um, an online math platform where you're going to do your homework and quizzes, things like that. If we're still online when we get to our first exam, our exams will be on WebAssign also. Um, there's two things that you need to get into our web assigning class. You need this class key right here, and then you also need an access code. You can get started right now. You don't need the access code um, to get started. There's a trial period, I think two weeks, where you can get in there and you can play around. Um, you'll be able to participate in our class and do all the homework and stuff, even if you haven't bought an access code. Um, but that trial period does expire at the end of two weeks. Um, and so you will if, at some point need to purchase or somehow obtain an access code for WebAssign. Uh, and you can order those directly through WebAssign. I think you can order them uh, directly through Cengage on the WebAssign site. So here, let me close this and I'll sign in fresh. So this is WebAssign, and I'm going to go to login. Oh, I might already be signed. Okay, no. So if you're not, um, if you don't have a WebAssign account already, then you can come down here and click Enter Class Key, um, and that will walk you through creating an account. The class key that you would enter there is this thing, right? I did, uh, SF College Space. 2055 space 7604. Um, but only do that if you don't have a have an account. If you do have a Cengage account, if you've used WebAssign before, go ahead um, and click either this link or you can sign in. Um, is this one? So if you're unsure what to do, go ahead and click enroll with class key. And worst case scenario, you'll have to create a new WebAssign account. Um, it's not a bad thing. And then it should take you to a page eventually that looks like this. So after you've signed in, it will ask you for a class key. Uh, I have the settings right now set up for you guys to enter them rather than me enrolling you from a roster because that never works. You don't need a student ID or anything like that. Um, you just need the class key from the syllabus. Uh, even if you don't have your access code, you can go ahead and do that. All you need is the class key. But at some point between now and, let's see, what is the purge date gonna be? Probably the 25th. Between now and May 25th, you will need to get a, a WebAssign access code. So places you can get those. 
So you need to get in to WebAssign today. Um, I will be going ahead and posting our first homework today. And the way the homeworks are going to work is on um, Monday of a given week, I will open up that week's homework. That homework will be for um, all of the stuff we're going to talk about Monday through Friday of that week. And then that homework will be due the start of class the following Monday. So today I'm going to open a homework assignment which will be due on the 16th. Um, I'm sorry, the 17th, right? Is that next Monday? Um, and it's going to cover the stuff that we're going to talk about this week. So you need to get into WebAssign today. Um, eventually, so you use the class key from the syllabus. to enroll. And at some point before, what date did we say that was? Before the 25th, you need to get an access code. Uh, which is like buying the textbook, right? That's the idea, is that the access code for WebAssign, that's how we pay for the, the services that they provide. It's supposed to be replacing the, the textbook. Um, the access code, I think, is usually around $100. Uh, um, some places you can get it for a little bit less. Uh, some places you can spend more on it. <laughs> um, I think the bookstore at Santa Fe um, might finally have a decent deal on it, but I'm not sure. Last time I heard, um, Santa Fe's bookstore was charging somewhere around $85 for the, um, for the access code, but it, it changes from semester to semester as the college renegotiates with Cengage. Um, so I would recommend looking on the Cengage website itself. As you enroll with the class key, they will offer to sell you uh, an access code. And you can either go ahead and buy it there, or you can scroll down to the place where it says, you know, click here to use temporary access. Um, and then you can go find an access code elsewhere. Places I would look, um, maybe Abe, uh, but I would check Amazon. Uh, Abe Books. And of course the Santa Fe Bookstore. I don't think the bookstore is operating uh, physically right now, but I do believe um, I do believe they have the ability to buy these things online. Uh, so I'm not 100% sure this is the first time I've started a semester this way without, without physical access to campus. Um, but I, I do think that you can still, because everybody who uses financial aid to buy these things needs to use the bookstore um, if they want to do it before disbursement, um, that there must be a way to do so online. But I think the best deal you're going to find will probably be on Amazon for these access codes. Or you can just buy them direct from Cengage. I think there's at most like a $15 difference between any of the like the cheapest and the and the most expensive source. Um, so I wouldn't panic if you're if you're unable to find it at one of these places. Just go to one of the others or buy direct from Cengage. Uh, it's not a not a big deal either way. But yep, once you get in, you will see something like this. And as soon as I publish your first homework assignment, you will see it right here, um, and that will be published after class today. Um, and then you can get started. So most of, most of what you do for this class is going to be here in WebAssign. You're going to be solving problems. Um, my advice would be to always have pencil and paper next to you as you're doing that, and to always write out nice, careful solutions to the problems as you solve them. Um, don't just write down the bare minimum that you need in order to get the answer to put into WebAssign. Write a nice, full solution. Make sure you can follow the, the steps. Make sure there's a logical flow to what you're writing. Um, what I'm hoping with this class is that we'll find uh, time to let me see a lot of your written work before the test. So normally in, a, in an actual classroom environment, in an office hour or something like that, I can look at your work and we can talk through your process. That's a little bit harder online. That's a little bit trickier because we're not in physical proximity with each other. Um, so it's important that you come to these, these virtual office hours, that you bring solutions um, or, or things like that to class, right, to these meetings that we can share with each other. 
um, and that you pay attention to the notation. So I watch what I write very carefully and try to make uh, your solutions mimic my solutions as far as, as the notation is concerned. Uh, okay. All right, so the textbook and WebAssign, those are them. Um, course objectives, this is Calc 1. So we're gonna talk about Calc 1 stuff. The Calc 1 stuff is uh, real numbers. So um, the real numbers turn out to be a very strange place, stranger than you may think. Um, limits of functions. So uh, this is something you may or may not have talked about a little bit in your pre-calculus class, but um, we like to ask what happens not at a point on a graph, but very, very nearby. Um, continuity turns out to be intimately related to this concept of a limit. Rates of change, uh, definitely something you've seen in algebra classes before, concept of slope. Um, and then it turns out you can, you can look at slope over shorter and shorter and shorter intervals, and that will get us towards this thing called the derivative. Um, and then once we have some skills for differentiating functions, talking about their rates of change, um, we'll move on to talking about applications of the derivative. Uh, and that will be pretty much the first half of the class, I mean, a little bit more than the first half of the class, probably the first two thirds of the class. So the first third of the class, we're gonna be just getting comfy with all the tools um, that we need in order to cook up the derivative. Then the middle third of the class, we will be differentiating. Uh, and then the last third of the class, we're gonna be talking about integration. So that's how to find the area under a curve, solving the area problem. Um, turns out there's a few forms of integrals and then there are some theorems that connect differentiation to integration called the fundamental theorems of calculus. Uh, cell phone policy, not really relevant right now, um, but you know, the, the feel is still, still here. So don't, don't use tech in a way that distracts others in class. Um, attendance, I'm gonna take role at first, just like I did today because um, financial aid needs to know that you guys are showing up. And then also, uh, it's nice for me to know if there's anybody who's not been showing up so I can reach out to them and see what's going on. Um, but it's not a part of the grade. So you're never gonna lose points or gain points based on attendance. Makeups, um, if you miss a test, and I know this online setting has to be a little bit more lenient and a little bit more understanding. Hamlet, sorry, my dog. Oh, you can't do that right now. It's okay, you're a good boy. Uh, Makeups, if you miss a test, um, let me know. I'll work with you. I want you to take the test more than anything else. Um, we can worry about the validity of the excuse down the road. Um, but if you miss a test or if you know you're going to miss a test, just reach out to me and, um, and we'll get it figured out. Uh, if you miss a homework, if there's a homework that comes due and you're, you're not ready for it yet, WeatherSign has a system to request an extension. Um, I always grant the extensions and there's no penalty. Um, so the due dates are there to try and keep you on track with the lectures. Um, but if you miss something, please don't panic if something goes by or you're only able to get it to 60% completion. Um, don't freak out, don't sweat, I promise. Um, just put in the extension request and I will grant it. Um, homework in general, so there's gonna be a homework set each week on WebAssign. Um, and then just before, uh, not just before, but before each exam, about a week before each exam, um, I will publish a study guide, which is select problems from the homework um, that I think are especially worth working carefully in order to prepare for the test. This, um, so the homeworks are all in WebAssign. You submit them in WebAssign and that's it, they're done. The study guides, you're going to write out your solutions and you're gonna scan them with something like Cam Scanner, um, and then you're gonna submit them to me on Canvas. Um, and we'll talk, we'll talk through exactly how to do that. But the main point of the study guide is to get you to write out nice, careful solutions to challenging problems that are relevant to the test um, and to talk with me, right? So if you, the purpose of the study guide is to give you some challenging problems that you have to write out, which encourages you to come by office hours and show me your work and have us talk through the problems. And that way, before the test, I get to see your work, you get to see um, my my critiques, and that's super duper important. So as soon as the study guides are published for an exam, um, you need to get started on it. And as soon as you run into something on the study guide that's giving you a hard time, you need to come see me in office hours and we can talk about the problem. And that way you'll be ready for the test. Um, so that's, that's the ethos there, is that uh, 
that the study guide gives us an opportunity to talk and share work before the test. If we don't, if you just do the study guide and then hand it in after the test or hand it in uh, on the day of the test and we never talk about it, that's, that's good. I mean, the, you still solve the problems and, and that will still prepare you in, in a little way for the exam, but it's nowhere near as useful as us having a conversation and looking over your work together. Um, so even though we don't have in-person office hours, really still important that, um, that you come by those virtual office hours and that we go over at least one or two problems together, looking at and sharing each other's work, um, making sure that, that you know what my expectations are as far as notation and legibility and all of that are concerned. Um, so please work the study guides right away when they're published and come by office hours to talk to me about them a little bit. So we don't have separate lab meetings from our lecture meetings um, because we're all online right now. Um, but yeah, on Fridays, um, we would occasionally do some lab stuff that uses a computer. But for the most part, the labs in, in my Calc classes are just problem solving sessions. So it's not, not relevant to us. Exams though, this is something I'm sure everybody's curious about. We got three midterms, three midterms and a final. So four exams all together. Um, the three midterms are going to take place during our normal class time, and this being a virtual class rather than an online class, you have to take the exams during the prescribed time window. Um, so our first exam is going to be somewhere around, and we'll get to this, don't worry, somewhere around uh, June 12th. So on June 12th, um, instead of signing into Zoom for class, uh, we'll have a procedure to get you into the test, but you would have to do it during class time. So between 11.45 or 9.45 and 11.05. Um, the final exam, like we said earlier, is not at a normal uh, time. It's at 8 a.m. And then we've got some important dates listed here. Uh, first day of class, last day to drop with a refund. Uh, so that's good to know. I think that's Friday. Um, some holidays. The last day to drop with a W. So this is the last day to um, get out of the class without it affecting your GPA is uh, July 13th. Uh, so these are things I would put in your calendar on your phone. Um, last day of class is August 7th, the final again, and then grades will be up by August 14th. The grade breakdown is here. So the online homework, the web assigned stuff is worth 45 points or about 8% of the overall grade. The study guides, they're worth 25 points each. There's three of them, one for each midterm, and so there's a total of 75 points there, and that's 13% of the grade. Midterms, <clears throat> 100 points each, about 53% of the grade uh, overall. And then the final exam is worth a little bit more than a quarter of the grade. So you see pretty much all of the grade comes from the tests. All right, uh, the homework and study guides, these are useful, these are good, these, these should only ever help you. Um, but almost all of the grade is going to come from the test. So it's important that you prepare well for the exams um, when they come. The grading scale that I use is the normal one. Um, the, you know, uh, 90 to 100 is an A, and then the top three points in any category gets the plus designation. Uh, this stuff is all boilerplate syllabus stuff. So uh, Jell-O's, academic integrity, uh, the ADA stuff. The Jell-O thing you don't need to worry about at all. Um, general education learning outcomes, statistics, the state tracks that we've been asked to just ignore during this coronavirus madness. So don't even worry about that. Academic integrity uh, is a big issue with online classes. So I'm going to be using something like Honor Lock for our exams. Um, so we have some some means of proctoring, um, but it's important that you know you, you're honest uh, and that the work you show me is an accurate representation of your skills. That way the grade I assign you is an accurate representation of your skills. And that's how we keep your degrees valuable, right? If, um, if we can't trust that the systems that assign our credentials are legitimate, then the value of those credentials drops to zero very fast. Um, so don't cheat, don't cheat. Um, I don't like having to deal with academic integrity stuff, but it seems like every other semester or so, um, something happens and I, I don't want to do that. I know you guys don't want to do that. Um, so just just be honest um, ADA so if you were working with the DRC or if you have um, a suspicion that um, That you would be working with the DRC this summer if they if they were open 
uh, or if you had any sort of accommodations for testing elsewhere in the past or you conjecture that you might need them in the future, um, just let me know. Uh, send me a Canvas message and, um, and we can make sure that we're um, offering the appropriate accommodations. The DRC is still open, so you can, you can still talk to them and work with them if you want. And I think they even still have a testing room there. Um, but also if you're just interested in the, in the added time or whatever accommodations um, the DRC might have offered, uh, I can do my best to, to just give that online also. Uh, but they are still there. And if you would like to talk to them, uh, I strongly encourage you doing so. Discrimination, harassment, um, basically just don't be an asshole, right? Be nice, be nice to everybody. Um, student rights and responsibilities, this is something you should read. Uh, it's, it's not something that I, I want to spend a lot of time going through, um, but these are the, the standards to which you are being held. Uh, so it's, it's worthwhile to read those. And then here we have the course calendar. So this week we're gonna talk about functions and real numbers, and then we're gonna start on limits, which is the first big topic in calculus. Uh, the idea of a limit of a function was the, the big step that both Newton and Leibniz took that allowed them uh, to then proceed with, with calculus that, that nobody in the past had. Um, and it, it's a, a challenging thing. So we're gonna talk about limits at the end of this week and then at the start of next week also. Um, that leads naturally to talking about continuity and limits at infinity, which are, are separate subjects. Um, each, but they, they both involve the notation of limits and the, the language of limits. So um, that'll be our first two weeks, just getting, getting comfy with limits. Um, and then week three, we're going to start talking about derivatives and rates of change. Uh, so this is where the real, the real bulk of Calc 1 um, begins to come into focus. And then we'll cover the basic differentiation rules, uh, derivatives of trig functions, the chain rule, which is a slightly more complicated differentiation rule, and we'll be ready for test one. So that's all gonna go by very fast. Um, by the end of week five, we will be having our first test and probably the study guide for exam one, I will release right around uh, the end of week four. After exam one, we're gonna talk about some kind of a uh, higher brow differentiation techniques, implicit differentiation, logarithmic differentiation. Um, and that's going to lead us into talking about some of these really cool application things. This is a, a tricky part of the class. So implicit differentiation and related rates, these are two things that people always complain to me about. When I talk to people out, out there in the world, you know, not even as a professor, just asking folks about their experience in Calc 1, these are the two things that I hear complaints about more often than anything else. Um, so you want to make sure you schedule a little bit of extra study time around these weeks. So towards the middle and end of June, expect things to get a bit tougher and you're going to have to put in a little bit more time. Um, having talked about those, we'll talk about min-max problems. So how do you find the min of a function or how do you find the max of a function? That's something that you may have been told you will do in Calc 1. That is when we will do it. Uh, then we're going to talk about MVT. This stands for the mean value theorem. Uh, L'Hopital's rule, um, which is a, a theorem that was named after a guy but shouldn't have been. He was an asshole. He actually just stole it. Um, and then we're going to talk about curve sketching, so how to draw really nice graphs of functions, even if you don't know anything about them, even if you don't have a graphing calculator, even if you don't have any of those tools using the mathematics of calculus, how do you draw a really nice graph of a function? Um, and then we're going to talk about more optimization, so more minima and maxima problems, but this time they'll be applied. So we'll be talking about real world problems where you need to find a min and a max. And we'll be ready for test two. Uh, so sometime around the 4th of July, around 7-3, I will be sending out the second study guide. Uh, and then through that week into week nine, uh, you should be working that to get ready for the second test. Um, once we're done with exam two, we're going to change tack. We're going to stop working with differential calculus and start working with integral calculus, uh, which first means solving the area problem. How do I find the area under a curve? Um, and then we're going to get to talk about this guy, uh, Riemann, Bertrand Riemann, who was a badass and um, was able to develop the theory needed to talk about definite integrals, uh, which is the solution to the area problem. Um, once we have integrals, we can talk about the relationships between integrals and derivatives. That is the two fundamental theorems of calculus, FTC1 and FTC2. Um, and then we'll spend the rest of the semester talking about integration. Uh, the final, again, is on the 11th of August at 8 a.m. I would put that in your calendar. Don't forget it. 
Um, and remember that this is a really rough outline. Uh, so this, uh, this may change a little bit. We may end up spending a little bit more time here and pushing some of the integration stuff. We may end up uh, moving a little bit faster through here and getting to exam one in week four. It's not intended to be followed religiously. Um, so pay attention to the lectures. Every week we'll make clear what sections we are covering and where I expect you guys to be at the end of the week. Um, and I'll talk to you uh, long before the exams about when the exams will take place. Okay. Any questions about all this kind of bookkeepy, syllabusy stuff before we talk about a little bit of actual math? Hey, sir. Hey. What's up? Yeah, I tried to buy the book to learn web assign, but I saw multi term access or single term access. So, which one can I choose? Uh, say that. Say that one more time. I tried to buy the book through our website. So I saw homework and ebook, multi term access, and uh, homework and ebook, single term access. Hmm. Maybe, maybe you could send me a screenshot of what you're seeing and I can let you know if there's something going on wrong there. Um, I'm not sure what the bookstore should look like from the student end okay. and because I've never looked at that. So, um, yeah, go ahead and send me a send me a screenshot of what you're seeing and I can let you know if, if that's what you're looking for or not. The single term access code will work if you're looking at getting it bundled or if you intend on taking Calc 2 and Calc 3 in the coming semesters, you may want to look into a multi semester access code. I think the options are single semester or um, six month and, um, and they might have other options there too. So the one you're going to go with is going to depend on on how you plan on taking the calc sequence. If you plan on going straight away calc one, two, three, um, then maybe the six month access code would be the way to go or the year long access code. But it's going to depend on on how you intend on doing this. For our class, the single semester access code will definitely work, but it might not be the most efficient thing. So it's going to depend on what else you have there. Um, I do also see some questions in chat. Um, calculators for the class. Uh, so um, the calculator policy for this class uh, is that you may use a scientific calculator, um, like a TI-30XS, I think is the one that's officially recommended. As long as it's not capable of doing any sort of symbolic manipulation or graphing, then it's okay. Um, but no graphing calculators, and um, we're also not going to use any sort of computer algebra system calculators. So if you have a TI Inspire or a TI-89, those are definitely out. Can't use those. Um, if you have a TI-83 or a TI-84, you can use it with the homework if you want to, but it's not really going to prepare you for the exams because the exams are not going to involve any graphing calculators. So my suggestion would be to just um, either issue calculators altogether, you don't need one, or um, or use a little TI-30, something like that. Okay, sorry, my department player is actually messaging me. I, I guess she can wait. Um, any other questions about the bookkeeping stuff? All right, so what I would like to see um, is that by our class meeting on Wednesday, everybody has signed into WebAssign. So I'm going to be keeping track of the roster here. Um, I see that, that we've got three folks in already. That's awesome. Um, remember, you don't need to have purchased the access code to get in there right now. You can get in there right, right this second. All you need is this class key. Um, if you don't have a WebAssign account already, you can just click enroll with class key. If you do have a WebAssign account, you can sign in and enroll in a new class using this class key. Um, and then when it asks you for an access code, that's different from the class key. Remember, that's the thing that you use to like pay for WebAssign. When it asks you for an access code, uh, look down towards the bottom of that page. There should be a little kind of grayed out link that says uh, click here for temporary access. Um, and that will get you in. And then we can worry about getting you an access code down the line. Uh, you should have two weeks. Uh, it looks can like... File sticker? Yeah, what's up? I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm kind of like not very good with all of that, 
Um, so every time to like um get myself set up with the web design and everything, I always just went to like the math lab and they kind of just helped me. So like, um, is there a way like maybe somehow um like I don't even know if like the math tutors will even help me with something like that because I don't even know what the questions are until I stumble across them. So, um. Like. Uh, just in case if I get stuck. So I think Cengage has some some help options. I think it, when we go to if we just go to webassign.net and look at the login page. Um, We should have, yeah, if you go to contact us, or maybe even just to support here, and show support student support. Yeah, so they do have a guide here that might be useful. Um, and then if you're having a, a hard time getting things to work, uh, having watched this guide, you could also, um, call them on the phone and they should be able to to kind of walk you through um, getting registered. Thank you. Any other questions about how to get uh, how to get into WeatherSign, how to get rolling with the class? I already sent you the email, so give it. Say that again. I just sent you the email. Okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah, I will take a look at that and get back with you. Um, I do think this is about where okay, our thank you. is meant to end. So rather than trying to dig into any of the actual mathematics today, we will we will do that on Wednesday. So next time. We're going to talk about the real numbers, uh, open and closed intervals, and then limits. Um, and that'll all be good fun. So uh, for now, the only thing I'm going to ask you guys to make sure you do before Wednesday is get signed into WebAssign. Uh, get in there and um, and make sure that you are registered for the class. Um, and then we will pick up from here on Wednesday. Uh, if you have any questions that... Intervals? Uh, yeah, yeah, open and closed intervals, yep. Okay, thank you. Oh, there was one other question here that I, that I received via the chat asking, do we drop the lowest test grade or do we swap the lowest test grade with the final? Um, that's not something that I normally do. No, I don't normally drop a low test grade or swap a low test grade with the final. Um, I'm pretty lax about makeups. So if you miss a test, um, then I would much rather you just make up the test rather than uh, swapping the grade with the final. Uh, last semester, it was a department policy that lowest test grade has to get replaced by the final because of all the coronavirus stuff and everybody getting a little bit thrown off. So I'm not sure whether that policy is still in place. If it is, then we will replace the lowest midterm grade by the final um, if it improves things. But uh, the, the baseline policy for the course is no, we don't. Uh, everything is just exactly the point system that's described in the syllabus. Any other questions or concerns? Okay, no, sir. so I will go ahead and stop the lecture here. Um,